private detective gets little enough sleep. So when I get a chance to catch up with a flock of shut-eye, I grab it. Right now at 11 p.m., I plan to shed my clothes and grab about 12 hours of retroactive relaxation, which shows you how silly it is for a fellow to make plans. The hotel I call home is nothing fancy, but it does have two wings separated by an areaway. At the moment, a very touching scene was transpiring in a room across the areaway from mine. A big husband was trying to give his wife a kiss hello. Only she seemed to be acting coy about it. All of a sudden, I realized she wasn't being coy. The big moose wasn't trying to kiss her at all. His fingers were digging into her pretty throat, hard, and she was running fresh out of oxygen. The lights in the room across the way went out, and it occurred to me that I just might have been an eyewitness to a murder. The room I saw was just across the areaway. I decided to check it fast. I went down the corridor to the last two rooms. It had to be one or the other. Then I stopped to listen. Everything was quiet inside. So I broke up the big silence and knocked. First knock got me nothing. So I did it again. Hello. Hi. You all right? I mean... Everything okay? Was the last time I looked in the mirror. How do I look to you? Great, only I, I thought I saw a guy choking you. You the house detective? No, not house, private. My name's Jeff Jones. I, I live in the other section. Look, uh, I was just turning in and I, I looked out the window and I saw a guy choking a woman. I guess it wasn't you, was it? <laughs> Haven't been choked in years. Now look, beautiful, I'm not kidding. Oh, neither am I, Mr. Jones. Say, you're all geared up. Care to join me in a little drink? It'll relax you. You've convinced me. I'll use your phone, too, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Mr. Jones. Uh, on the wrong side of the hotel, aren't you? Uh, hello, Mr. Wilm. I can explain everything. I was just about to turn in. I looked out of my window and saw a guy choking a woman. I thought I'd investigate. Somebody been choking you, Miss Hall? No. Look, why don't you forget about this and get back to your room? Look, I know what I saw. I was just about to call you from Miss Hall's room. Now, do I get a little cooperation from you, or do I call Lieutenant Doyle of homicide? Homicide? You mean this could be murder? That's exactly what I mean. Uh, look, this silly routine is costing the hotel money. Come on, get back and get some sleep. After I ask a few questions. Miss Hall, do you have a flower pot on your windowsill? No, I haven't. Who lives in that room? Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Conifer. She's small and dark? Well... Yes, I guess so. At least uh, she's not quite so plump as Miss Hall. That's a nasty crack, but it's true. I've seen her. You both better stand back in case he's still in there. Look, they're probably asleep, and they'll cause a big hassle about being disturbed. Let them. Mr. Jones, I know that you're a detective and uh, that you've been living here for a year, but are you sure that you have the uh, power to arouse our guests in the middle of the night? After all, this is nearly 12 o'clock. I don't seem to be arousing anybody. Uh, that's the master key? Yes, why? Let me have it. Nothing doing. I said, give me the key. You got no key from me. Got to have the key, friend. All right. But remember, if this causes a big hassle, you're responsible. I like my job here. Here's your key. Forget about your job. Must have been saying things. There's nobody here. Not visible, at any rate. Here's the flower pot. This must be the room. Why don't you stop playing games and get back to your room? Strangled, like I said. You think she was murdered? Oh, no. She just stepped into a nice dark closet to die. Oh, those bells. 
Hello. Hi, Lieutenant. This is Jeff. Oh, what do you want? I've got a lovely murder for you. Want to step over to my hotel? Your hotel? Why? Because that's where the murder was committed. It so happens I was an eyewitness. All right, you stay right there and don't touch anything. I'll be right over. Well, you were an eyewitness to the killing. Who did it? A man. Well, that's a great help. What did he look like? How was he dressed? Well, it looked like he was wearing a gray suit and he had hair. Jeff, this is a murder and certainly no time for kidding. I'm not kidding, Lieutenant. I'm telling you exactly what I saw. From my window, I, I couldn't identify the killer. This is an eyewitness? Can you add anything to uh, that graphic description? Maybe. Mr. and Mrs. Conover were arguing earlier in the evening. I could hear them blasting each other even with my radio turned on. What time was that? A little after 10. The argument was louder when I turned it off. Don't tell me you turned it off to listen. No. Mr. Willem won't allow radio after 10. I don't make the rules around this hotel. They're laid down by the owners. Yeah, but you sure see that nobody breaks them. What's going on in here? Mr. Conifer. Who's that? That's your wife, Mr. Conifer. She's dead. Dead? Gussie dead? But she can't be. You're kidding, mister. You must be kidding. She's been murdered. Someone strangled her. But, but who would murder Gussie? You had a battle with her earlier. Sure, we had a little beef. We always have arguments, but they all end up the same. How? Oh, I walk out and leave her with nobody to talk to, like tonight. Yeah. Except that tonight you choked her to death and put her body in that closet before you went out. No. No. I didn't lay a hand on her. I swear I didn't. Hey, you're a cop. That's right. You're going to try and frame me for killing Gussie? But you can't do it, see? I won't let you get away with it. All right, let's go. Here we go. Well, no deal, mister. Jeff, you wait here until the fingerprint man gets here. And see that nothing is disturbed. I'm going to put Mr. Conifer away before he hurts himself. Hey, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I just remembered something. What? This man couldn't possibly be the murderer. No, why not? How tall would you say Mrs. Conifer is? Well, about five, three or four. Certainly no taller. How tall are you, Mr. Conifer? Five feet six. Gussie was always after me to wear lifts in my shoes. She liked tall men. She met a tall man tonight who didn't like her. Who are you talking about? The killer. He was a full head taller than Mrs. Conifer. Are you sure? Positive. He towered over when he was strangling her. Yeah, you see? I told you I didn't lay a hand on Gussie. How about taking the cuffs off? Huh? Uh, before he does, would you mind answering a few questions about your wife? Sure. I got nothing to hide. How long have you been married? Six months. What was your wife's maiden name? Kirk. Gussie Kirk? No, that was my nickname for her. She used to be gloomy a lot of times, so I called her Gloomy Gussie. Her real name was Sybil. Sybil Kirk? Yeah. Shall we have a conference in the hall, Lieutenant? Yeah, I think we better. Did you get that? That I did. Sybil Kirk was Big Eddie's girl in the East. Yeah. This could turn out to be a very special murder. You are so right. Well, am I going to get rid of the handcuffs? Not yet. I'm holding you as a material witness. But I didn't see anything. True. But in the meantime, you might remember a tall man who wanted to murder your wife. Come on. And don't touch a thing. Yes, sir. No, sir. Well, I must get back to the desk. The night operator is on alone. Go ahead. Before I go, Miss Hall, I must ask you to return to your room. I really must. That's not a must. The idea of sticking around with a dead body gives me nothing but nothing. I'm on my way. Sorry we missed that nightcap. Take a rain check? You know it. Say, so you're nice, even if you are a cop. Good night. Night. Doyle told me to see that nothing was disturbed. But I figured having a look around wouldn't disturb anything important. So I gave the room a going over, hoping to find a clue to the killer.
Behind a picture, I found a diary, Gussie Conifer's diary. It was interesting from page one, but I gave the early pages the once over lightly. I wanted to see the latest entries, figuring she might have told her diary about a tall man with strong fingers. I figured right. She told her diary plenty about the tall man without mentioning his name. I was busy digesting details when I was rudely interrupted. Somebody took a pot shot at me through the window and I decided to play dead for a while. I waited a reasonable time for the sniper to try again. He didn't. So I unlocked the door, turned off the lights, grabbed my gun and stood in the corner like a good little boy and waited. Also, there was a chance that I might have another visitor, a tall one, interested in Mrs. Conifer's diary. Come in. Mr. Jones. Don't scream, <gasps> beautiful. Just tell me why you're here. Uh, I thought I heard a shot. Are you all right? You did. Come out of the lights. You're a target standard. Oh, did someone shoot at you? Yeah. Through that window across the areaway. But why? Generally, when somebody takes a pot shot at you, the idea is murder. What's the trouble? What gave you the impression there might be any trouble? Why, half a dozen guests called the desk to say they'd heard a shot fired. I knew you were in this room and had a gun, so naturally I came in to see if you'd shot some. And naturally, you just barged in without knocking. The hotel laws of the state allow the management access to all rooms at any time. I told you to go back to your room. Listen. How is it you're still here? Listen, you big baboon, I did go back to my room. But I also heard the shot, so I came to see if Jeff was okay. So it's Jeff now. Chummy, eh? Will you slug the man, or do I take him apart with my bare hands? Take it easy, baby. Maybe you better go back to your room. Let me handle the baboon. Are you a man or a mouse? Neither, gorgeous. But when there's a full moon and someone like you around, I'm a curly wolf. Well, there'll be a full moon next week. Take care of yourself, Curly. I'll do that, baby. I think I'll tell that dame to move in the morning. No, stop it. Let's talk about the guests, the male guests. All right, what do you want to know? You think of anybody around here that owns a rifle? A rifle? Why should I? Anybody have a rifle case come in with the baggage lately? No. Was that really a shot the guests heard, Mr. Jones? Yeah, a rifle shot, and it was meant for me. Well, what do you know? I know it came in through that window, and it ended up here. Just missed my head about an inch. Close? Yeah, too close. This is going to be bad for business. A murder and an attempted murder all in one evening. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Betty. Where's the body? Over there. Oh, and there's a bullet hole in the wall you might be interested in. How come? I thought the dame was strangled. She was. The slug was meant for me. The police department's here, mine host. See that he gets every courtesy. I'm going to take a nap. Bye, Daisy. So long, Jonesy. I decided to go to my office to do some adding up. Also, to put a small book where it would be safe. Jeff! Hey, I don't get it. About 11 p.m., you took a powder out of here to go home and get some shut-eye. It's now 1 a.m., and your back fresh as a daisy. Hey, what is it with you? Insomnia or catnaps? With me, it's murder, plus literature. That's literature? Fascinating. It should be titled, Build Up for a Murder. <laughs> Turn on the light, friend. I hate being left in the dark. A girl got murdered in my hotel tonight. This is her diary. Murdered? Hey, you know, that should make very interesting reading. It is. I almost got killed for reading it. Is that so? Well, let me have a peek at it. Huh? Sullivan, I'm ashamed of you. Well, you read it, didn't you? Strictly for professional reasons. I'm going to give you this book. Oh, thanks. But you're not to read a word of it. I'm not? No, you're to put it in the back of the cash register, where it'll be safe until I pick it up in the morning. Come on, I'll hurry up. Okay, if you insist. There, it'll be nice and safe till you need it. And, Sully. What? Promise me you won't read a word of it. I promise. That's a good boy. See you in the morning. Yeah, I'll have fresh coffee waiting for you. so honorable. I felt better with Mrs. Conifer's diary in safe hands. 
I went home to really get some sleep, knowing I had a big day ahead of me. I turned on the lights and noticed that my room wasn't as tidy as I'd left it. <laughs> then the lights went out, and I was in slumbering, without counting a single sheep. I slept for several hours, dreamlessly. Then a bell started ringing. I didn't want to be disturbed, but I had to do something about it. Hello? Hi, Jeff. Did I get Jeff? No, I'm still in a reclining position. Say, what's this I hear about somebody trying to shoot you last night? Unfortunately, that's true, pal. I know. Bates just brought me a report. Whoever it was used a 30 caliber rifle. And the trajectory shows that it was fired from a room across the way. Well, now, that's very enlightening. Oh, yes. Bates is a very efficient ballistics man, as well as a wizard on fingerprints. What did your wizard find in the way of fingerprints? Well, that's why I'm calling you, Jeff. Your prints were all over the place, especially on the bureau. They were? Yes, they were. And after I warned you not to touch anything. Oh, how very careless of me. Too careless. What are you holding out on me? Well, not only the fact that I got shot at, but somebody slugged me. Oh, yeah? Who slugged you? The gentleman didn't leave his name. But if you'll meet me in my office in a little while, I may be able to shed some light on the situation. Okay, I'll be there in 20 minutes. Morning, may I come in a minute? Sure, come in. Well, what's been going on here? I got tired of the furniture arrangement and decided to change things around a bit. It's attractive, don't you think? You're kidding, of course. Have it your way. You wanted to see me about something? Uh, yes. Uh, last night during the excitement of the murder and all, I'm afraid I talked a little tough. I came up to apologize. I hope you'll let bygones be bygones. <laughs> Forget about it, will you, old boy? I also told Miss uh, Hall she didn't have to move. Well, that was mighty kind of you. Well, did the uh, police find any clues to the murder? Not yet, but I have. You mean you know who the killer is? Yeah. I just shook hands with him. What are you saying? When you gave me that bone crusher grip just now, you overreached yourself. You got real strong fingers. You're tall, just like the guy who strangled Mrs. Conifer. Go on, tell me more, I'm laughing. Sure. You were blackmailing Mrs. Conifer. She refused to pay off any longer. Threatened to sing to the police. So you let yourself in with a master key and strangler. Handy, living right here in the hotel. You got a great imagination. Yeah. Like now, when I'm thinking how easy it was for you to take a pot shot at me last night, then show up a few minutes later and ask if everything was all right. Now you're playing guessing games. No, not according to Mrs. Conifer's diary. It's all right there. Right down to the last 200 she paid you a few days ago. So Mrs. Conifer kept a diary. Yeah. The one you were looking for when you tore my room apart and slugged me. You're wrong there, Mr. Jones. Because I didn't tear your room apart and I didn't... Come on. We're going down and talk to Lieutenant Doyle. Get going. Okay, I can't argue with a gun. but I've got to have that diary. That young lady who slugged you knows how important it is, too. How are you breathing, Curly? Don't try to talk. I'll get you a glass of water. Feel better? Yeah, thanks. I seem to have arrived just in time. Uh, 
I seem to be a pretty fair hand with my gun, too. Oh, I'm really not going to scare me, but when I heard him say he was going to kill you and a gun was lying on the floor, here you take it. Dead? Yep, very dead. What happens to me for killing him? Nothing. When I tell him you saved my life. <sighs> Do me a favor, Curly. Like what? Like putting your arms around me and giving me a little kiss. I, my knees don't feel so strong. <sighs> feel any stronger? Strong enough to let my hair down and tell you I've been holding out on you. About what? About Mrs. Conover. I pretended I didn't know her. Did you? Yes, I, I went to school with Gussie. We were very close, almost like sisters. Suppose you could do me another favor? Sure, beautiful. Not that kind. Well, what then? Gussie kept a diary. She did? Yes, I want it. The things she wrote in it were private. Like how Willem was blackmailing her, threatening to tell her husband something? Did she say what he threatened? No. Well, then what's the use of letting the newspapers make a sensation of it? Gussie's dead and so is Willem. Please give it to me. I can't do that. Well, why not? I haven't got it. It's at my office. But you, you will give it to me, won't you? We might be able to arrange that. We'll go to my office and talk it over. But first, I, I have to call Lieutenant Doyle and tell him about Woolley's little accident. Here's the final entry. Paid W another 200 today. This is the end. I told him if he tried to collect another dime, I would go to the police. He was furious, but I was firm. A plain case of blackmail, no doubt about it. W was Mr. Woolham, and that 30 caliber rifle we found in his room proved that he was trying to kill you, too. I still want to know what he was trying to blackmail your wife about. Search me. She never made a wrong move the six months we were married. I don't care what she did before that. I was crazy about her. You know, she was pretty fond of you, too. Here's an entry she wrote a month after you were married. Jay is good to me, and I'm very happy. What a relief to be safe and married and away from all the others. Got any idea who she meant by all the others? No. How about you, Miss Hall? You said you were very close to her. Who were the others? Well, I haven't the slightest idea. And as I said before, I think it's an outrage digging into a dead woman's past when her own husband doesn't want to know anything about it. Very commendable attitude. Then, then why don't you give me the diary and forget about Gussie's past? Well, there's another little entry that puzzles me. It was written just a week ago. I'll read it to you. A dame moved in next door yesterday. She's registered under the name of Marsha Hall. The way she looks at me every time she sees me gives me the creeps. I wonder if they sent her. You must have been real good friends. What are you driving at, Jeff? There's something bigger here than cheap blackmail. What is it, Miss Hall? What makes you think I know anything about it? You never did tell me how you happened to drop in just as Woolham was giving me the full treatment. Well, to get the diary, you know that. Sure, to get the diary of a perfect stranger. That's what you were looking for when you went through my room and slugged me. Well, that's a lie. No, it isn't. Woolham told me that just before you shot him. Now, what's so important about this diary? I'm not talking. You will when Lieutenant Doyle files a murder charge against you. Me? File a murder charge? She didn't kill Willem to save my life. No? No, she didn't want him to get this diary. So she shot him. Somewhere between these covers is a motive for a murder. Maybe it's in code. Maybe... Hey, where have I been? You've been right here all the time. Between these covers. That could be it. It is in spades. Well, spill it, Jeff. Don't keep it to yourself. It's dynamite, pal. The lowdown on Mr. Crime himself and his entire syndicate, including killings, the works. But how did Gussie get a hold of a thing like that? When she decided to marry you and forget the mob, she took this along with her for protection. Willem knew about her past connections and was blackmailing her. Well, what about her? I imagine she's Mr. Biggs' current girlfriend. Is that right, Miss Hall? 
You'll get a fast answer to that one, Copper, if you don't hand that over. Well, certainly. Far be it for me to argue with a lady mobster. Pick up the lady, Lieutenant. She's all yours. Well, well, come along with me. <laughs> <laughs> 